So what makes a great suede Oxford? Today, we're gonna to examine this in detail, looking at these three suede Oxford models. On the left, we have the Apollo Scafora Neapolis. We have the Amblier Strand in the middle. And on the right, we have the J. Fitzpatrick Pullman. So, as you look at these three shoes, and they're all very different, we have a regular short wing, Oxford, we have an Adelaide, which is a semi-brogue, and we have an austerity brogue on the right. Uh, they all bring a little bit something different to the, to the fold. You can see that the colors are very, very similar. It's all definitely within the same family. Um, and they're all Oxfords, meaning that they're more formal than derbies. Uh, the most formal of the three is the austerity brogue on the right, this one here. But this also does have some uh, non-formal aspects to it. It has this beautiful contrast stitching, which makes it a little bit less formal. And it has a contrast sole on it. So instead of a dark sole, it has a light sole, which also makes it a little bit, little bit less formal. Now, on the left here with the Palo Scafora, you can see it also has contrast stitching, which does make it less formal, but it also has um, uh, broguing, uh, which also makes it less formal, both as an, uh, a medallion on the front, as well as the brogue holes going along the, uh, uh, the, the wing lines and, and uh, basically all the seams. Now, the uh, Adelaide here does not have contrast stitching. It does have broguing, but the broguing is much less obvious because of that lack of contrast stitching. And so I would say in, if I was looking at this from a formality for my shoes, just uh, based on, on all of those features, I would say this is probably the most formal of the suede and the others are less formal because I think the contrast stitching does play some games with it. Now, in the end, they're suede. Most folks will consider these to be an informal shoe and would recommend wearing them, pairing them with um, chinos or uh, flannels and tweeds during the winter, um, but not necessarily like a formal uh, suit fabric. So as you think about that, you know, there's a lot of, uh, lot of other aspects to the shoes uh, that you want to consider. Now, one piece is the soles themselves. Now, the leather soles, Okay, especially beautiful soles like this one, are, are definitely more formal than a rubber sole. Now this is a rubber sole here, but this is a city rubber sole. This isn't a big, chunky commando sole by any means, so that, uh, that does make a difference. Now, this is just a plain leather sole as well. So, again, this has a contrast sole versus a black sole uh, in terms of the edge, and that's really the edge here. That doesn't have to do with the color on the bottom, but that is a, uh, another aspect of it that's important. Now, when we look at these, though, it's not just formality that matters. Uh, when we get down to it, what we decide is going to be the shoes that we like, that we like to wear, uh, is going to be about quality, it's going to be about comfort, and it's going to be about durability, right? So uh, quality, comfort, and durability really come from a bunch of different things, but let's just focus on two main things, two things. We're going to focus on materials, and we're going to focus on construction. So let's take a look at those in detail. So now the first thing is the suede. So as we look at these, how do you determine how you're looking at suede? Well, the first thing we can do is we can look at this in terms of, here, and I'm going to zoom in on this to see if that comes through a little bit. And here we go. Look at that. That is thickness. So you can easily see the thickness of the lining and the thickness of the suede here as we look at the shoe. Now, as we compare this, and this is the J. Fitzpatrick, to the Amblier, this is not as thick. Looking at them side by side, okay, you can see there is a thickness to the J. Fitzpatrick that is remarkably different. 
and I'll actually take a picture of them side by side with the focus under more control and you'll be able to see that. But now let's take a look at the Palo Scafora. Because as we look at the Palo Scafora, this actually has, um, compared to the J. Fitzpatrick, uh, this really does not like to focus, sorry about that. There we go. So there's the J. Fitzpatrick. The Palo Scafora is harder to tell because they have this piping in there. And they have, I mean, it's a beautiful lining. They have the piping. And then they have the suede. Now the suede is a little bit thinner. But it's also a little bit softer. Which is, which is a difference. Now, you also can look at the stitching, right? So it's easy to tell on the contrast stitching here, the stitch density for the Apollo Scafora versus the stitch density of the J. Fitzpatrick. And there we go. See, look at that versus that. The Scafora has smaller stitches. Not much smaller but definitely a few, few additional stitches per inch. Now, and this is where the stitches are small compared to here, where the stitches are intentionally bigger because that's part of the pattern. So that's something to consider as well. Um, then we look here where it's not a contrast stitch, and how do we judge that? It's a little bit harder, but there you go. The stitch density here is actually quite good. So, but again, it's harder to see because they are, they are different, okay? Now, what about the softness of the lining? Certainly people who are wearing their shoes are barefoot are going to want to make sure that they have soft linings. And that's going to be very important to them. Now, if I put my hand in the heel, there's suede heel on the Scafora and on the Amblier. J. Fitzpatrick does not have a suede heel. But it also only has the one seam here. It has no seam on the outside of the shoe, which is probably going to make it more comfortable for those people who have sensitive heels. So that's another piece there. Now, um, the, the softness of the lining on the three, and these are all very high quality shoes. Um, you know, the, uh, from a price point perspective, the uh, Amblier. Here, I'll put them in the same order they were in before, just to avoid confusion. Uh, the Amblier is probably the least expensive. Uh, these were $378 new, these are $398 new, and these are about $800 new. So there's a, uh, there's a significant difference. And uh, now these two are both machine made. This is handmade, so there, there's a difference there as well. Um, so, but uh, the uh, Amblier is a little bit... Uh, you know what, they're, they're really, they're all equally soft. So, again, can't really say that there's a, a, a significant difference there. Um, now, these are um, hand-lasted, hand-welted, uh, using a Goodyear welting method, uh, but it's sewing, it's sewing by hand, uh, according to uh, Mr. Scafora, uh, who was interviewed by a friend of mine who's a dealer. Um, even though it says Goodyear welted, that's just something that, you know, he uses as the stitch methodology, not, he's not actually using a Goodyear welting machine. Um, and the Amblier and the J. Fitzpatrick are both made in Spain versus Italy, and these are both, uh, using a Goodyear welting machine. So, a little bit different there as well, but again, that's not going to change, you know, uh, that's going to be something for shoe aficionados to, to understand and collectors, not necessarily something for, um, you know, your everyday wearer. Now, the rubber sole on this um, is, is really, you know, that's going to be one question. I'm not really a super fan of rubber soles, and, and certainly not of this kind of rubber sole, but I do, uh, I do find these incredibly comfortable. Um, and uh, although I did try to sell them, I am going to put them back into my rotation. Uh, just, uh, they, they are pretty good. Um, the J. Fitzpatrick's um, are really nice. You can see that they have a beveled edge here. Which you can't do on rubber, so I'm not going to compare it to that. And then they, they have the ironed edge here. Now, they don't have a groove cut into the edge. It's just absolutely flat. And then you can see this beautiful heel stack um, on, the, uh, on the heels, which is uh, just really stands out because of the natural buff 
uh, buff edge here. So really, really nicely done there. And then here with the Scafora, uh, this has also got a big, beautiful heel stack. It's just hard to tell because um, uh, because it is a uh, because it is painted dark. Uh, but this is also several very, very thin layers where the other one is is somewhat thicker. Um, and here they have that uh, sole, and of course there's this part of the sole, uh, which, I mean, let's face it, that's just art. Uh, just absolutely incredible that Paulo Scafora does that on their soles. Um, in terms of fudging on the top of the welt, uh, there's no fudging on any of these, which is to, to be expected in my opinion, because in my mind fudging is something that you would do more on a, a formal, uh, formal shoe versus a casual shoe. So with the suede, um, I don't think it's necessary. Stitch density on the J. Fitzpatrick is definitely considerably um, uh, denser here on the outside, of the, on the top of the sole. Um, it's definitely denser than, say, on the Amblier. Um, and on the Scafora, where you can see it, um, it's about the same as the J. Fitzpatrick. It's very dense, but again, this is done by hand, not by machine. So. We'll, uh, we'll consider that a wash. Overall, I think that these three are incredible, incredible shoes. Uh, you can see this has the little seam in the back here. Uh, for those of you who watch the channel, um, I'm going to be um, looking at this heel cap uh, construction method because this is something that I pointed out on the Gaziano and Girlings that I have. Um, and here, again, got the little seam in the back here. And on these, again, a seam in the back here. Although it's very hard to see on these, if you do put your hand there and I get the angle just right, you can see it as well. So um, clearly, three great shoes, um, three different styles, um, definitely different lasts as well. This one has a much more of a chisel last. Uh, this is more of your almond. And... This is kind of a wide chisel, um, but this has got more of a narrow chisel. So, uh, great differences. Um, I love the shoes. Um, for a collector like me that um, likes to wear different varieties and, and have different options, uh, you know, they're, they're classic Oxford examples and they are, uh, they provide that variety as well. So, no complaints here. Uh, Anyway, that's the uh, difference that I see between these three. I'll take some other pictures of construction to uh, help illustrate what I'm talking about. Hope you uh, find it helpful. Thanks.